What we're going to do right now is to try to show you that every continuous compounding problem should have e in it, um, which is kind of weird because our definition of e at the moment came from our example where we invested $1 um, at 100% interest and then we compounded an insane number of times for a year and all we got was like $2.72. Um, what we actually got was a number really, really close to e that we can get close to um, by, by raising this to higher powers. Now what I want uh, is something that looks a little more general. It's exactly the same thing. Uh, I'm just going to write down one plus one over blob, where blob is just any huge thing. So if it's any huge thing there and any huge thing here, eh, it's not gonna equal E. It's gonna get really close to E. And that's actually what we mean. So starting here, what we want to do is look at our ordinary compound interest formula. Remember that's, uh, what do we have here? We have P and then one and then plus R over N to the NT. Now, um, coming up with this formula, by the way, is much easier than coming up with a formula for say the quadratic formula, where there's a lot of skill involved, a lot of numbers running around. The, the formula for compound interest formula just comes from row by row adding the interest and seeing what you get. Um, we actually did this kind of calculation about six days ago, um, and you guys actually did it on, on one of the homeworks and you did great. Um, this is not rocket science. Um, so what I want to do here, I want to make the ordinary compound interest formula look more like one plus one over blob to the blob. Um, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the fraction r over n so that's one over something to make it look more like one over blob. So this is gonna be one plus one over, and then down here is gonna go n over r, and then I still have my um, nt, make sure that it looks like an n and a t, like that. Now all I did was rewrite my compound interest formula so it looks like one over one plus blob. Now, um, in order to get e involved, the denominator and the exponent have to be the same number. Well, my number over here is n over r. So I'm going to put that in there and then fix it. So I'm gonna put square brackets here and then I'm gonna have one plus one over, I want n over r, that's n over r. And to make this work, this is supposed to be n over r. Now, this thing in the square brackets now is getting very close to e because that's gonna be a very big number. Unfortunately, I did something illegal. My old exponent was nt, my new exponent is n over r, and I wanna fix that. Well, we can fix that without killing ourselves because of rules of exponents. We know that when you take a number and raise it to a power and raise it to a power, you multiply the exponents. So what I wanna do is put an exponent right there so that n over r times that exponent is nt. Well, two things have to, ha have to happen, right? is that first off, this R has to cancel. So there has to be an R up here, like that. And now you can see that that R will cancel. The other thing is there's gotta be a T up here, like that. And we can see if we actually just rewrote this, we would get our original compound interest formula back. But we actually have something wonderful that just happened, right? This thing in the square brackets as long as n is huge, n over r is huge, so the blob here is huge. So what I have is one plus one over blob to the blob for a huge blob. Well, that says the thing inside the square brackets is getting very close to e, right? So let's write down getting close to e. And so the whole thing is getting close to p. And then there's the e being raised to the r t. Ta-da, and that is where the PERT formula comes from. Not a big deal, it just comes from rewriting and knowing the definition of E.